people think that performance analysis is mathematics. And in mathematics, there is no two answers. One plus one is two always. All right? But it is not. I mean, obviously, one plus one plus always is two, but I mean, the performance analysis, there will be situations where the answer will be very different for the same data, for the same system, for the same everything. Here's an example. Throughputs of two systems A and B in transactions per second is as follows. A, with the workload 1 gives me 20, B gives me 10. And higher is better. On workload 2, A gives me 10 and the B gives me 20. Now I work for company A. What do I do? I want to show that my system is better. <laughs> so one thing is that you forget workload 2. Just hide it in the rugs and say, look, workload 1 is the one which is most common and I have measured it and this is most important. So most paper when you read, they, this is what they do. First they justify the workload in the sense that they will show small, small jobs are the most common and then we are optimizing performance for small jobs, right? But if your system doesn't work for small jobs, then you say, no, 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 no. The big jobs are the most important one and here is the performance for the big jobs, right? So that is one. Okay, any other technique? <laughs> okay, so it turns out there are several ways to do this. One is that we want to use both the workloads. First of all, the rule of the game is that somehow somebody has said that I want to you to compare the performance on these two workloads. Your customer has told you already. So you cannot hide it under the rug. So one way you could say, well, that look, I we measured performance on both workloads and we took our system as a base. We are number one. We have one here and they have only 50% of our system performance. Actually, this would be company B. If they wanted to sell themselves, they would say, look, we took the ratio with A as the base and A is we are half as fast, but on workload 2, we are twice as fast. On the average, we are 1.25 times better, 25% better. Oh, okay, so I think the number of workload is not big enough. If it was 11, maybe there won't be any problem? Maybe. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah? You are getting there. Okay. Anything else? All right. So, here is the thing. When we go to this chapter, we will show you real results from real professors from real universities, published papers in the most, um, public, most respected journals where people use this technique with a large number of workloads, like 11. And it was just basically used, this is the kind of thing they used. All right? And one could not figure it out that this data can be done the other way around until you work it out the other way around. So other way around is, that um, if you are working for company A, what you will do is you will just take the ratio other way around. You will say we will take B as the base and just do that. We will take B as the base. I think um, it was right here in the previous slide. B as the base and they will be 25 percent better. And as I said again, is that um, you have to, yeah, so there is, a, there, there is a recommended way. Again, is that you have to work out yourself five different ways so that the other guy cannot raise finger and say, well, you know, you did it wrong. Because the answer will come out different. I mean, which base you take here in this case? Base A or base B? And you publish a paper and you say, I took the base B, then they will come back and say, look, I did the same thing with base A and the answer is different. So you have to work out both ways. If they are different, then you have to do something different to figure out what, which is the right way to go, right? And sometimes it is not, and then you have to, that's where the art part comes in. Is there a definite way to decide the color of a painting? None. You try out three different colors, and maybe some color looks better. You know, not painting, but product design. As I said before, the, this is the art part, is that, um, yeah, I mean, Scientifically, I mean, what one could argue either way, and this is exactly what I keep telling you is that whatever you say, you have to have a reason as to why you are saying it, and then you know, somebody comes up with a different way of doing it, then you say, oh, I didn't think about that, or you know, maybe I've, let's work out these differences, or the best thing is to do all those different ways beforehand, so you're on a solid ground. Most people will use this opportunity to use the techniques that we have taught in this course to apply to things that they are already doing. If you are working on something, that is the right thing to apply the techniques to. All right? And I am all for it that you apply it to your thesis. You don't have to do extra work just to, for this course. It will be good for you for both 
because what will happen is then you will really think about what is the right answer, right thing, right technique if you are working on a real problem. If you are working on a made up problem, the answer will be made up. So if you are working on a PhD thesis, master's thesis, anything or you are just developing anyway, writing a paper, use these techniques and submit that technique part to this class and your whole thesis might be 500 pages, I don't care, I am not going to read that. But for this we have 15 pages and I need 15 pages to be concentrating on the part that is in this course. And let me say this, most of the co projects that have been done in this class were like that, or many of the projects, let me put it this way. And many of the people, many of the masters and PhD thesis in this university, I have seen using the techniques that they learned in this class. And that's my goal, basically. My goal is so that you use it in the real world. And right now your real world is your thesis. Once you come get out, I don't even know, but uh, hopefully, you know, you will use it. All right, prerequisites. So first of all, I need everybody to know computer science. So if I use the word cache, you know, multi-programming, you know, thing like that, I hope that you have heard it before because I'm not going to explain, I don't have time to explain, you know, computer science here, taken the right way. So actually this is a computer science course but this is not, we are not teach, are talking about operating systems or databases and things that you, you will just take examples from those areas, even networking. Then if you have done some programming that would be good because we will ask you to do some calculations and um, we used to write programs in our early days but nowadays there is Excel, Microsoft Excel, which does all the computation you never need to do. So get good book on Excel or you know good online thing on Excel, make sure that you know it so that you can do it very fast. So I really don't care how you got the answer, I mean basically I care how you got the answer but what, what tool did you use, whether you use a calculator, whether you use a slide rule or whether you used a C program, that's you know same thing for me as long as you basically if you wrote the C program, you wrote the right answer. If you use Excel worksheet, you wrote the right formulas, things like that, right? So you need an introduction to computer programming for that reason. You need to be able to write some things. Introduction to digital logic and we don't require that. This is not a hardware course and we don't um, basically, I mean, you know, we don't worry about it. Basic probability and statistics we need, all right? So if you have never heard of random number, as I said before, don't know what a mean is, what a variance is, that is going to be tough. Matrix multiplication and inversion. There are many places where you have to multiply the matrix, you have to know how to multiply the matrix, how to invert a matrix, how to take a transpose of matrix. This is a course on analysis, right? I mean, there is a lot of math here. So, those are the things. So, here are the things that you should know. Mean and variance. What is a normal distribution? What is a density function? What is a distribution function? What is coefficient of variation, correlation coefficient? What is a mean, mode, quantile? These things you know, need to know. So if somebody said, well, I have 90 percentile or 80 percentile and 95 percentile, what does that mean? Right? If I say median of 100 numbers is so and so, you need to know that. We go to projects. So it has to be a paper, which could be a many different kind. Of, for example, it could be a survey paper, it could be a case study, it could be whatever. I mean, we will lot more example will give you. You could do a survey paper on some workloads of different types, measurement, modeling, simulation tools, survey on some particular area of the computer science, performance analysis based. It's not that you want to write a paper on sensor networks here. In this class, you write performance of sensor networks a performance of databases or something like that. It could be a real case study and that is what I would prefer that you do a real case study on a system that you are already working on and I expect that you will spend about six hours on the project, nine hours on the class, total 15 hours and anything that you do here has to be new. Last two to four years. I don't want anything that is more than four years old, anything that is in the books. Alright, so not in the books, 
And if you write a good paper, we can submit it to a journal, to a magazine, to a whatever, you know, or a conference, and that has been done in many cases. Um, although in most cases it is people just publish it with their advisor rather than with me, so that's fine with me, that's not a problem, but basically that's the goal, is something that is new. Everything goes on my website. Every paper that has been written in this class and any other class is on my website. A lot of people read it outside. A lot of people submit it to their course advice, <laughs> course classes outside. A lot of people have published it as a paper with their name on it. You know, but, I mean, you know, we try to get hold of as many cases as possible, but obviously we don't have time for all of that. But basically the point is that we don't probably get to be caught. I, we don't want somebody to catch us and say, well, look, this is a copy of our thing. So the goal is to provide an insight or information not obvious before the project. And that's the goal. And the real problems such as thesis or job, if you're working for a company, you have some problem to solve, fine, take that problem. And the homeworks are basically to apply technical learning in your class, right? Examples of previous case studies. So this is the exact correct list. This is the list from the last year. So obviously you cannot do this. You cannot do this year because we don't want to repeat. If you have to repeat a project here, then let me know. So we can think about as to how your angle is different. But here is an example, and you can see Google App Engine, Amazon Web Service, Smart Grid, Hypervisors, Virtualizations, Image Sensor. So this is somebody's thesis, things like that. And this is the list from previous year. This is the list from all previous year, and so on and so forth. You have the whole handout. You can go to the website. You can read these papers. The papers are all online. Yeah, if you go to the course website this year, there is a pointer which says the previous uh, offering of this course are available. So the, we, I think we did it in 2011, before that 2008, 2006. You just click on those years, you will get 2011, and you will see all the papers. 2008, you will get all the papers. 2006, you will get all the papers. In fact, you will get all the course handouts and the recording. So you don't have, you can even listen to this lecture uh, as I gave in 2011. I'm recording everything. This will be on the website. This will be on YouTube. And um, anybody can listen. Everybody listen. Lots of people listen. If you miss a class, you can listen to the class, exact class as it is, or you can listen to the previous class. Here is the guidance though. I mean, like, I will just explain to you before a few days before that, what are the hot topics nowadays? What are people in interested in? So, for example, when people selected Google App Engine and, and things like that, how did they come to that smart grid? Because those are the hot topics right now. All right? So I will give you some idea of the areas that are really good and interesting. Cloud computing, you know, right now is very hot. And so, so things like that, and then you go into that area if it is interest to you, and then select a topic yourself, do the literature search, and within a week that is due. And, and then you send me, give me an outline two weeks later. An outline is simply, these are the things that I will discuss in my paper, so kind of headings. So, my goal is to prepare you for the correct analysis and modeling of any system, including you talked about grading. So once you take this course, you will understand all this grading stuff. And um, there will be self-reading and writing, and get ready to work hard. <laughs>